Hello my gorgeous plant people. Welcome back to Reading Mindfully. My name is Iana and today we're doing a house plant tour. So I hope you enjoy my plants and welcome to my home. All right, so we're starting the house plant tour off in my kitchen. As you can see, I have my Maranta lemon lime here. This is one of my favorite prayer plants. It's always putting off growth and I just love the striking patterns that are in the leaves and especially with the dark versions mixed in with a little bit of light. It's just a very easygoing, beautiful plant. Over here we have my trusty snake plant. This is the same snake plant that I usually keep in this spot. And then on top of the chest here, I just have my uh, Calathea rufa barbara. This is a really thirsty plant and it prefers not to have a lot of sunlight so I keep it the furthest away from the window. As well as I have a Sanzevaria micado and those are just the plants that I keep on the chest. Moving along to my table, I do have my Aglionema cutlass. This is a very nice Aglionema. I, this one is one of the few Aglionemas that actually grows as a tabletop plant, so that's why I chose to put it on this table, as well as my Ming fern and my uh, Maranta red vein. And I had just propagated this one, so this one is I'm currently growing back from being propagated. I am going to put the cuttings back into the middle of this plant, but as you can see, it's still putting off tons of new growth and is looking very good. Down here, I have my uh, Sansevieria Whitney. I just got this. This is a newer Sansevieria. And then I have my Calathea Medallion. This is one of my harder uh, Calatheas. Um, it's definitely not the easiest one, this and the other medallion that I have. Um, but yeah, it's doing pretty well. It is putting off a new growth in here and then over here as well. But like I said, this is definitely not the easiest Calathea for me. And then in the back here, I have my Calathea alantifolia or my rattlesnake Calathea. And then I also keep my um, potting supplies right under my bench as well. Over here, this is a, just a plethora of things, but I kind of like how I um, styled it this time. And so in the back, I have my variegated burl marks. I did have this plant outside for the summer, which is why I was able to get really nice variegation on this plant. I was able to get more cream variegation, as you can see here even variegation like this one. I do have a couple ones that have like a lime green variegation and even a yellow variegation, but I was able to really bring out the variegation in this plant, as you can see, and it really enjoyed being outside. Next to it, I have my Anthium regal or regale. This plant hasn't been doing too much growing. I'm still learning to care on this one. This is probably one of my harder anthuriums, but it is putting off new growth there. So hopefully this newer leaf will be one in which I was, you could tell that I was getting better at the care. Down here I have my uh, bird's nest fern. This is, I think it's the Leslie or the Chrissy, one of those ferns. I really love the texture of this fern and just the fruit the frills on the edge of the fronds. It is a very unique fern. I have several cuttings of my uh, tetrasperma that I took from my trap uh, prop. I have several uh, tetrasperma cuttings that I took from my transformation series, just propagating here. And then here is my pendifolium, my anthurium pendifolium. And as you can see, this last leaf came out massive. If I stand back, you can really see the difference between the two leaves. Next to that plant, this is the anthurium metallicum. This new leaf came out very beautiful. I'm very proud of this plant, especially since these are the leaves that I had before. The leaves that came on the plant when I first imported it. 
and then I also have a new leaf growing in here so this plant is doing pretty well was... and then back here I have my anthurium cobra that has also been doing well it's put out these two new leaves and I didn't have much hope for this plant but it has been growing and I'm very proud of it um, both my mom and I had this plant and it wasn't doing well but hers is turning around as well and then here is the huge Aglionema calypso. This is one of my favorite Aglionemas. I just love the variegation in the leaves. It's a very dark leaf with a lot of light green and silver variegation. And then sometimes you can even see a little lime green speckling. It is really a nice uh, Aglionema and I, I really enjoy it. I did have it in an area that wasn't getting so much light and so that's why a lot of the newer leaves are a little bit smaller and so I'm hoping putting it here will allow it to get a lot of bigger leaves and then it even looks like it is blooming a little too but other than that this plant is very ha happy and healthy I'm just working on getting bigger leaves next to that plant I have my Syngonia mojito this is a very easy going plant. Um, it does grow a ton of leaves. As you can see, I'm getting a lot of the variegation there. It is putting off a new growth there. Um, the only thing I don't like about this plant is that I do have a lot of empty space at the bottom. And so I'm either thinking about propagating it all the way back or just leaving it like this. Up here is one of my pride and joys. This is my a tanniki rubber tree it did a ton of growing this summer and the leaves have come out huge if you can see that the leaves are a lot bigger than my hand and they have just the most beautiful variegation to them I'm really proud of this plant it doesn't give me any hard times at all and it just looks absolutely gorgeous down here is the philodendron ring of fire. I did have this one staked, but then I realized that I didn't like the way it's, it was looking staked. So I did go ahead and take it off. I had it outside during the summer and it did put off these bright orange leaves, as you can see here. So this plant does love a lot of sun, a lot of sun but I would go ahead and acclimate it before just throwing it outside. That way you don't do any damage. I did have a little slug go munch, crunch, crunch all over my leaves, but you know, that's mother nature for you. Up here, this is the Sansevieria Bento Sensation. This is one of my slowest growing Sansevieria. It did put off a couple of pups on the other side. As you can see here, this plant does need a lot of light, which is another reason why this was one of the plants outside. Um, and as you can see, it, it worked because I haven't had this plant that long either. Here is the philodendron uh, Florida ghost. As you can see, I've only been able to keep two newer leaves on this plant. I did have it out of the window so that way it could turn more green and I could hold onto the leaves. But then I decided that I didn't want so many plants on my windowsill and so back <laughs> there is back where it is on the window and it is putting out a new shoot I think it's because I fertilized it recently so hopefully this plant will like it here it's not too sunny in this window so hopefully it'll be all right next to that is the anthurium vici or king anthurium it is doing okay it's starting to get its ribbing on the leaves which is very nice I love seeing the mature leaves I believe I do have a new growth coming out there, and so I'm interested to see what the new growth comes out. I did have all my anthuriums over here, but I'm trying to split everything up just so it doesn't look, you know, so like, not plant chromatic, if, if, if that's even a term, but you guys know what I mean. Like, I don't want all my plants of the same thing in the same area, so that way it can have some kind of variety. So I put this one here. Next to that is the Philodendron melanochrysum. You can see I'm getting a new leaf here. This one I did actually have outside and it sprouted this new leaf. But um, I'm trying to give this one not so much bright light uh, to see 
what will happen but at the same time I want to give it enough light so that the leaves will be a, a substantial size I'm also going to try to water this and even this plant here um, on a nice schedule so that way they don't dry out because I have been letting them dry out in the past and I think that's what the issue was so speaking of that here's my philodendron um, varicosum as it, you can see in the past I was not watering it correctly um, but this is the first leaf and then you can see that my watering has gotten better this is the third leaf that it's put out and so I am keeping this plant more moist and it seems to be really liking it now here we have some goodies over here is the ficus um, altissima this plant really enjoyed being outside it's actually uh, having roots come out of the bottom of the pot so this is one of the plants that I actually need to repot um, because the roots are growing out here are some newer leaves coming onto the plant it is just so gorgeous I love the variegation on this plant and just especially with all the like the lime green and orange in this area I just felt like it looked really nice here in front of that one I have my philodendron uh, fibrosum now this plant doesn't have too much going on in the front although I really do love the front and it's very satiny the, the majority of the the interest is on the petioles you can see that they're very furry even almost reminding you of a green caterpillar or even the snuffleupagus but I really do enjoy this plant and for a while then there in my house plant tours it only had one leaf and so I'm glad that it's really starting to put on multiple leaves here here I have one of the stunners this is my philodendron biliatiae this plant has just taken off outside it had uh, put out these tiny leaves if you can see there and then it started throwing out these leaves and then this was the last leaf that I received this summer and so this plant is also massive it's another one that needs to be repotted and I feel like I just repotted it but this one takes off like a champ and then down here I have my Syngonium um, pink splash this one I basically started over and it's so cute now it's just growing little tiny leaves over here is my aglaonema red valentine this one is doing pretty well this one's actually blooming in another area as you can see the bloom right there it's putting off several different leaves so i think i'm getting better at my aglaonemas at least in the smaller forms this is one of my staghorn ferns my old reliable fern and it's just doing really well it really loved being outside as well Next to that is the bird's nest fern, one of my favorite ferns and plants of all time. I just love the different fronds that come out on this plant. I don't shine this plant, it just automatically comes out very shiny and glossy. And then the fronds are just so interesting. I even have one that looks like a fishtail, so that's really cool. Next to that is the golden dragon. I really love this plant. Sometimes I wish it was more variegated, but this is just a very nice plant. I did recently propagate this one. And you can see that there's some growth in there. And then here is my Adapapawensi. I also recently propagated this one. I like the way it's growing so much better because it used to be really lanky. It was probably this tall, but it was really lanky and had a lot, a lot of spaces between the petioles. And so I'm really liking the way that it looks now. It looks a lot better. And this one's always also a good grower if you give it the right amount of light as well. And then, as you can see, I have an empty space here. I like to keep empty spaces sometimes, especially if I'm getting a plant or I have a plant in mind that I want to get. And here is where I would like to have my monstera. So that's why there's an empty space there. Down here I have my philodendron Swami Ferrum, recently propagated and looking well. Next to that is the uh, bamboo, the bamboo, no the zebra fern. 
and that's looking really nice since I propagated it and cleaned it up. Or not propagated it, just so I recently just cleaned it up. I have my Raffida Ford Decursiva there. Next to that is my Ficus Aldry, which has the softest leaves ever and putting out nice sized leaves. This one also needs to be repotted. And then I have the Anthurium clarinervium. With this is the last leaf that it's put out. It puts out nice big leaves. And it's even got a new leaf here. And let me see if I could turn it without messing it up. There's this new leaf. You have to be careful with the anthurium leaves when they're first coming out because they're so dainty. Here's my philodendron gloriosum. And there's that leaf that was rolled up. It did unfurl and it's looking so good. And then you can even see I have a little baby here, a little sprout there. And this one has even sprouted since I watered it. Down here is my Philodendron Plymonii, which I recently fixed up, and you can see it's re-sprouting. This is my newly acquired Homolumina, which is a very beautiful plant. The leaves almost feel leathery, thick and leathery, and it's just so such a nice plant. It reminds me of like a frog pattern. Next to that is the Aglonema Chocolate, one of the plants that I refuse to give up on. This is probably my third or fourth attempt on this plant, but it's doing well. It's been putting out tons of leaves. I had it actually outside, and this is a new leaf, and that's a new leaf, as well as this one. This is my Philodendron Melanochrysum Varicosum Cross, recently propagated and looking well. You can see the new growth here. And I put the cuttings in the bottom so that way it looks more full. Let me back up so you can see that. And then up here is the Domino Peace Lily. I really love this plant. I've really gotten into peace lilies. Uh, but it just has like this interesting texture, kind of like spinach, wilted spinach, and I really like it. Such a beautiful plant. And then back here is my rehabbed uh, philodendron McDowell. It's doing excellent. Even this piece, this long piece here is starting to grow roots on the bottom. But you can check out my transformation series to see what I did with that one. Here is my Anthurium pergidii. This plant puts off the biggest leaves I have ever seen. And I do get little spots here. And this is what happened when the plant was touching another plant pot that was wet. And so this is why I moved this plant to an area where there were really any other plants touching it. Because I'm trying to prevent any future leaves like this one from getting the same damage. As you can see, this one doesn't have that damage on there because I moved it before it could really be affected by rubbing up against other plants because it definitely doesn't like getting its leaves wet. Here I have a plethora of ferns. I have another staghorn fern under my asparagus fern which is taking over. I can back up so you can see my asparagus fern. That is just one massive beast. And then back here I have my beautiful Australian tree fern putting out the most beautiful fronds. Here's a new fiddlehead here. And it's got several fiddleheads in the middle. And I put this grow right here just to give this area a little bit more light because it was a little dark. This is my Aglaenema um, Key Largo. It is just a very beautiful Aglaenema. I do like the shape of this one. It's very interesting, nice and rounded, like a mountain. And then next to my Buddha here, I have a new Aglaenema, which this one is so beautiful. I found this in New Jersey. This Aglaenema is called the Aglaenema Platinum, 
and it is just so gorgeous. So I put it here to kind of play off the colors in my Buddha. And then next to it is this is the Calathea Peacock, or better known as Cora. And I just love this blushing that you get here when the plant gets enough light. Underneath this fried egg, I have my Calathea Mahoyana. It is growing very well, putting off very nice leaves, as you can see there. It is definitely getting a lot wider than taller. And then covering that is my philodendron, I mean, my alocasia fried egg. It's growing really nicely. It's even putting off new growth here. I did Velcro this one because it was splaying out and I wanted it to be a little bit more compact and not taking up over so much space. But that one is there. Behind that one, I have my Aglaonema Sparkling Sara. And then here down in the front is my Charmanthi um, Sanguinea. My Hurricane Fern, which is a super cool fern. You can see the, fr the front starting to go in a hurricane-like circle. This is my Syngonium Auritum that did, the, that did a lot of growing during the summer. I also Velcroed this one to keep it more together. And then I have my green rubber tree. Put off the most gorgeous leaves outside. I also have another one in here. But I believe this one is more of a Sophie because it is more compact than this one. So I think this one is a robust, Robusta and then the other one is a Sophie. And then if I step back, you can see my Monster Thai Constellation that is doing really well. Since I took the cuttings from my mom, I believe it is about to sprout a new leaf here. This is definitely a slower growing plant, but it is very beautiful. And it's probably one of my oldest, actually my oldest plants in my collection. And then here I have a little philodendron heart leaf and it's starting to trail down. I hope it'll actually like it in this spot because this spot doesn't get a ton of light. But I'm hoping with the grow light um, coming down that it'll be okay here. And then before we go to the other side, I just want to show you what I have on my coffee table. I have my Stenanthe Burla Marks, which is putting off beautiful leaves. My Stromanthe Trio Star also enjoying itself this one doesn't get any crisping and i don't know it turned out to be one of the easier prayer plants at least for me and then i have my money tree that this one i had completely cut back because i didn't like the way it was growing and as you can see it's put off this frond this frond and it's got all these tiny little growths in here and then if you guys want to see what my temperature and humidity is, there you go. And then if we come over here, I have a Calathea leopardina, which I saw a huge one in Connecticut. And I, and I was like, if I ever see another one, I'm going to grab it because I would love to have a big one of those. I have an Anthium superbum. A fern silver lady, which I rose from the dead. You can see it's doing so much better. Here's my Syngonium macrophylla that I chopped up. And my Calathea mosaica, which this plant had me so confused. I thought it wasn't growing, but this plant grows in spurts, so it'll grow eight leaves at one time and then it'll grow like kind of dormant and then it will grow like another flush. So that one's an interesting grower. Here's my medallion too. Another one that tends to crisp up a lot is if you can see the leaves there. My crocodile fern is nestled in there. And then if we come up, I have my peace lily sensation that is doing so well. It's put off so many leaves since it's been in my care. I think it's put off three or four leaves. And then I'm even getting a bloom here. 
oh my goodness, my peace lily is blooming. So that's really um, fun for me because I've never had a peace lily before. So for me to have a peace lily and trying it for the first time and have and it blooming is just so crazy. This is my philodendron micans. I just got this plant and I figured I was hoping that if I put it here that it would be um, it would do well here. So I can't wait till this one gets big and bushy and it trails. This piece is a little um, bent because I had actually snapped this one so I actually need to cut this piece off. And then down here is another ride or die plant. This is my um, variegated Stanleyana. And the variegation just keeps changing on this plant, if you can see that. This is also changed textures. It's a lot more like the peace lily texture. It's not as smooth as it was when I first got it. If you can see, these leaves are a lot smoother. It's now got this like rugged texture and the leaves are a lot thicker, so that's very curious. But this one trails all the way down. You can see the leaves down here and over here. But that one's an awesome grower for me. Here is my hybrid Abglenema. I believe it's a legacy slash Sumatra. But um, I was asking a lot of people what they thought it was. And I think that this is a legacy. And then this is like the green Sumatra. This is not the chocolate. It looks similar, but not really. And so, yeah. This is my big ZZ plant. I love this ZZ plant. It's put off so much growth. You can see all this growth in here. It comes in bright green, and then it turns to this beautiful dark green. But the ZZ is one of the easiest plants, and I recommend it for any household. And then we'll do my ruby rubber tree. My ruby rubber tree is looking so great. I put three stems in this pot, so that's why it looks so full. And yeah, it's just so beautiful. I love the watercolor, the pink splashing in that. And then here I have my tall Albo, Syngonium Albo. It goes all the way down. Um, I might have to move this plant. We'll see how it does with the lighting here. As you can see, the, the white leaves don't last as long but it is starting to put out more mature leaves. Um, here's another one. Such a beauty, such a beauty. But I love the variegation that I get on this one. It's so different every time. Here's a half moon. You can see that the variegation comes out. It's very unique. But that's what that looks like. And so here's an overview of the plants in my living room. Definitely jungle-like. And now we're gonna go to the bedroom. All right, so we're starting the tour in my bedroom here with my Aglaonema Silverado. You guys have seen us several times. Next to that is the Sansevieria a Sayori, which is putting off so many pups because I had it outside. There's my Calathea or Bifolia, which is now starting to put off bigger leaves. It did get a little bit of crisping because I missed the cup, uh, missed the watering, but it's still a very gorgeous plant. Up behind that, I have my Sansevieria Zylanica and my other Sansevieria Zylanica. Below that is my Bird's Nest Champion Fern, and then my Sansevieria Moonshine, which has grown so much bigger since being outside. The pups are almost as big as the mama plant, which is so fun to watch. And then here is the Philodendron Lickety Split, or Salum, or Selum. This plant had thrips, so I threw it outside. This is one of the first plants to go outside because it had thrips. And now it is thrip free and it's looking very, very good. But however, if it gets another set of thrips, it might have to go. But here's a new leaf growing in there. And then over here is another beautiful Sansevieria. 
as well as a newer plant. This is a, a peace lily platinum mist. As you can see, I've really gotten into peace lilies and I just really like the way that one looks. Under that I have my Stromanthe Magic Star, which is growing very well and it's getting more splashy. Here I have a collection of plants. This is my Philodendron Mammy. I wasn't doing well with this plant, as you can see by the first leaf, but then it started to pull off a lot nicer growth. And even this new relief is looking really great. I have a Hoya Compacta, Hoya Carnosa Compacta, just a green version. I have the variegated version. And then here I'm having, uh, I have a section of syndapsis. Don't mind the dirt. This is probably the dirtiest part of my house. But this is my syndapsis silver splash. Putting off a new leaf. You can see these leaves here. This is the silvery Anne. This one's not very silver. Has, has, this one doesn't have very much silver, but you can see on the tips there that it does have a little bit of silver. And then I have a silver lady. I've been wanting this plant for so long. I had this plant before and the seller was supposed to have given me a rooted cutting. It ended up kind of coming unrooted and it just did not last. But as you can see, this one is doing very well and is putting on several new leaves. This is my Maranta Lucanora Curturviana variegated. I had just propagated this one back, so that's why it's looking a little bit smaller. But it really enjoys this spot, so I'm keeping it here. I really like this one because it has variegation on every leaf. So I was very happy that he gave me this one in particular. And then if we move over here, we see a very sleepy sage that does not want to be bothered today. But next to him, we have a Aglinema stripes. I had this plant before, it was a really lanky cutting. And then when I saw this one, I was so happy because then I was like, I would be able to have a nice full plant. I did go back and forth, you know, two weeks if I actually wanted to buy it. And as you can see, I ended up buying it. So they, there's that plant. Here's my Maranta Silver Band. Doing pretty well. Putting out new leaves. It's got several new growths in here. But this one's doing a good job. I love the variegation on this one. The slight sheen, the silver that you see on the sides is very pretty. Here is my Calathea Sabrina. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller. I had actually had two Sabrinas. I combined them together, but the one Sabrina kept crisping while this one just looked perfect, so I separated them, and this is the one that was doing a lot better. I'm not sure why the other one was crisping, but this one is not crisping, and it was just really weird. In this corner, this is a very beautiful plant. This is one of the top wish list plants that I really, really wanted. This is the Aglionema peacock. This plant is rare for sure. You never see this plant offered anywhere. I actually saw it one time on Etsy, but it was so expensive, it would have cost me about $140, and I just could not find myself paying that. And so I actually watched one of Nick Pelegi's videos, and he happened to pass this plant, not really knowing what it was. And so I drove two hours just to get this plant, but it was well worth the drive. Very well worth it. Now some of them did have the lemon lime, variegation that goes down the middle and so i'm hoping that if i give it more light that this one will get some of the variegation back but even if it doesn't it is a very beautiful plant and it is also flowering and even the flowers have that speckling on there it is so cool next i have my burgundy rubber tree just looking beautiful as ever 
And then down here, I have another cool Aglaonema. This is an Aglaonema Frozen. I really love this one and how it gets like a kind of like pixelated in the middle of the bottom and then it kind of grows out. Here is the Syngonium Jade or Three Kings. It put out really nice white leaves outside. And as you can see, there's just a just a variety growing in here. And then I have the Calathea Warzovici. This is such a beautiful plant. It really does like being more in the shade because I did have it over here, just even not not even that far. And the the edges of the leaves started to curl. So as soon as I moved it over here, the edges uncurled. And so this is where I'll be keeping this plant because it really does not like so much light on the leaves. Here is my Philodendron Goldii or the Matophyllum. I love the lobes that grow in this plant. This one also doesn't like a ton of light and it will start curling its leaves. It actually did that when I had it outside. But I'm glad it's uncurling its leaves and it's just looking so be so beautiful. And then I actually have a new growth growing right there. Here are some cuttings that I took from my transformation series, just waiting to grow roots. Here is my rehabbed um, maiden hair fern, which is looking very good. I've been keeping up on the watering. As you can see, the soil is very moist and it is growing back really well. I have my propagation of Albo Syngonium, as well as the tip of my Philodendron. I believe this is the Plaumonii. This is a Syngonium, oh, Syngonium. This is a Syndapsis um, dark form. Syndapsis argyreus with its new leaf growing here. Syndapsis jade, although it doesn't really look like a jade. I thought it would get much darker, but we'll see how this one goes. It definitely doesn't look like the silver splash, but I don't know, it doesn't look like a jade either. And then this is a Syndapsis no ID. And then the last plant is my Maranta Lucanera Cotriviana, just a green version, and it is doing well here. So I'll give you a pan of my bedroom. I really like that area. Sage's quarters. And my reading chair. All right, so there you have it. That is my latest house plant tour. Um, I did move my plants in a little bit sooner than I had anticipated, but honestly, I really miss my plants being in my home. And it was a lot of work watering the plants inside versus watering the plants outside. And as well as a lot of my plants have grown so much that I really need to do a lot of repotting. And so any more time outside would just have them explode and grow. So I just took the time to just bring them in. I felt like this was the perfect time to bring them into my home. And so yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. I really hope you enjoyed my houseplant tour and maybe it gave you some ideas for your home. But as always, I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching my videos, liking and subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.